more lighting terminology. As we're progressing deeper into studio lighting together, it's time to discuss a few bits of terminology that may pop up along the way. Again, knowing these terms, it doesn't make you a better photographer, but it's going to help us communicate in the same language when we talk about our language of light. So we can have the same words to describe what we're seeing or what we're aiming to create. In a high key image, it's utilizing predominantly light or bright tonalities throughout the scene. And so if you look at the histogram, most of the information is going to be to the right of the middle, mostly in the lighter tones. The result of a high key image is often upbeat or lighthearted or joyful in mood. Low key. In a low key image, it predominantly utilizes darker tonalities through the entire image. So there's more shadows, more black and dark tones. And when you examine the histogram, most of the information is going to be left of the middle, mostly in the darker tones. A low key image is typically more dramatic and it's appropriate for more somber or serious imagery. Low key, high key, under and overexposed. There is definitely a difference between something being high key and overexposed. Similarly, there's definitely a difference between something being low key and underexposed. And many photographers incorrectly believe that a histogram should have the information roughly in the middle. That's totally wrong. It depends on what is in your photograph. If your subject is wearing a black outfit and then just has a sliver of light on their face, then almost all of the information in the histogram is going to be in the dark and black areas. But as long as you correctly expose for that sliver of light, then the image is correctly exposed. Now, when you take a middle photo, an average photo, and then you just make it look dark, so you're not letting enough light in, it is underexposed. It doesn't look particularly good quality, but maybe you don't know what correctly exposed is. And this is one of the reasons I recommend a light meter. You don't have to rely on your eye. I remember when I first started out, I thought that if a photo had a lot of shadows, it was underexposed. And then I couldn't figure out how to make the main light on the subject look good. A light meter is going to help you out. It's going to put you in the right direction for getting the correct aperture an ISO combination. Contrast. The range of tones between pure white and pure black or between highlights and shadows is the contrast in your photo. A low contrast image has limited variation between the white and black areas and it kind of exists in the middle, but a high contrast image has deep blacks and brighter white areas. There's no right or wrong. You can have high contrast images, low contrast images. They're just different types of photographs. And of course, there's every range in between the two. What is a stop of light? Throughout this course, I'm going to be mentioning stops of light. I may say things like, I've opened up my aperture one stop, or I've turned down my strobe one stop of power. But what does one stop really mean? A stop is either doubling or cutting the light in half. That's it. Nothing more complicated than that. So if you increase a stop of light, you're doubling the power. Or if you decrease a stop of light, you're cutting the power in half. And if the light changes one stop, let's say increasing from F8 to F11, we've doubled the power, we've doubled the amount of light. And then if we change it, decreasing from 5.6 to 4.0, we've halved, we've cut the light in half. Stops of light are controlled in several different ways in the studio. There's ISO, there's aperture, there's strobe output, there's even the distance of the light. If you are unfamiliar with your f-stops, you may find it useful to review this chart of full stop increments for both aperture and ISO. Now, often a light meter or your camera may actually read in half stops or third of a stop increments as well. So take a look at how your camera is set and review the numbers so you know what they really mean. Usually on your strobe, you can change the power output by these same increments, maybe a half stops, third stops, or even tenths of a stops may be available. Stops of light, aperture. If your light meter reads 4.0, check out the light meter video. This means you have twice the amount of light as if it read 2.8. Now, if your light meter reads F22, that means your light is really, really, really bright. So you actually need a very small aperture to get the image correctly exposed. But if your light meter reads 2.8, that means your light is very, very dim and you need a wide aperture to have the image correctly exposed. Stops of light ISO. Increasing your ISO means that the sensor is more sensitive to light and you can do so by doubling the sensitivity to light by increasing it in stops. In this course, it's going to be important for you to understand that as you control your exposure in the studio, you can do so with stops of light in the aperture and ISO. So simply remember that these numbers are in your course companion guide if you need a refresher on what stops mean and the values of increasing or decreasing by stops.